Hi everyone, Steve Patrick here doing a, a, a description, a short description of back bores today. And I'm just going to hold up two, but I have three, uh, actually I have four back bores for, that are regular length for uh, a trumpet mouthpiece. I have the CLP, which is the Classical Back Bore Plus. Um, that one gets big really quickly right after the drill it immediately gets big quickly and stays pretty big that's a departure from any other back bore that i have with the patrick line and again that's the clp i do not find that to be a back bore that is easily switched that you can easily switch back and forth between mouthpieces personally that seems to be kind of a classical back bore if you're if you're wanting to sit in a symphony or have a, an extremely orchestral sound that actually maybe takes some of the highs out of the sound and you're left with more mids and lows. Um, it's good for different applications. I don't sell a lot of those. They're pretty specific. It's, it's a pretty specific back bore for a specific job. So that's the CLP. Um, the classical back bore has a blank like this. This is the commercial, so you'll see that there's a little bit of difference in the outer blank design, which really doesn't make much difference as far as weight at all. The classical back bore, the Z back bore, and the commercial back bore. So the classical is labeled CL, the Z back bore is labeled Z, as in Z, and the commercial back bore is labeled CM. Okay, and those are all the same shape. They are all different sizes, but they are the same shape. I think it's really essential when switching around mouthpieces, uh, whether you're playing a classical mouthpiece or a commercial mouthpiece, to keep certain things similar. And I think one of the most important things is the back bore shape and the drill size. That's the hole. I tend to think that you should try to keep that drill size within one size, one full size. Um, I think that's best if you're going to switch around mouthpieces. That facilitates that without being too weird as far as back pressure. So uh, personally, um, I play on 27 drills for my classical equipment and I play on two-piece model um, commercial mouthpieces and in the top I'll use a 28 and in the bottom right here I'll use a 27. Um, so back to the classical back bore that's my biggest back bore that is this shape and this is a a really straight flare that just kind of goes slightly bigger and bigger and bigger okay so it starts here from the drill has a cylindrical section and then after that section it gradually gets bigger if you would kind of draw a straight line like that. So the CL is the biggest. Uh, it gets the it gets a lot of overtones. It's a beautiful sound with a classical cup on top. It's a very loud, bright sound with a commercial top. The reason I personally don't use it for commercial playing is not because I don't like the sound, but it's because I tend to get tired because it's taking so much air and I end up falling in. And instead of relaxing and playing relaxed, I tend to start having to tighten up, which brings some unwanted tension in my playing. So I don't have enough resistance when I'm using the classical back bore with my commercial top. So Classical back bore is what I recommend on all of the one-piece classical models. I think that's the best balance. I think that gives you the best sound if you're in a concert band or orchestra situation or brass quintet or playing solo literature. I believe that that's the best sound. Um, you can make a case that you might want the CLP back bore for that because you want an even bigger sound that doesn't have some of the highs in it. That makes sense if you're sitting in a, in a symphony orchestra where the sound is, the collective sound is really warm and dark and void of very many highs in the sound. 
onto the Z back door. The Z is going to look like this on the outside. This is actually my CM back door, but they look the same on the outside. And if I show you that, you're not going to be able to tell anything from the inside of that. So the Z back door is right in between my classical back door and commercial back door. The Z back door seems to do well on a one piece Z cup. So let's say I want to have a dark jazz sound, but I want to be able to put more air through it and become brighter if I'd like. The Z back door seems to do that. It's pretty warm unless you push it and then it becomes a little brighter. I find that the Z back door works best as a one piece with my Z tops. Um, I think I only make a couple of them right now, but they're going, they're going to be more plentiful in the future where you can order like a, a 5Z or a 3Z or a 75Z or a 78Z. We'll have several models with that Z cup, and that is a bowl cup that's not quite as big as a classical bowl cup, but it is not a small bowl cup. It's, it's fairly decent size. It has a good amount of overall volume, cup volume. So I recommend that in a one piece with the Z back bore. Um, some people have had success with the Z back bore on their commercial mouthpieces. I don't care for that personally, but uh, I've had some feedback and some people say they really like the Z back bore with their, you know, their 78 M top, just to throw out one example, or their 5 ZM top. They like their, the Z back bore. Um, like I said, I don't care for that setup, and, and in that setup, they're using a two-piece model. They're using that more commercial top with a 28 drill on the top into the 27 drill of the Z back bore. But again, I like the Z back bore in a one piece with the Z cup, which is a 5Z or a 3Z. Um, if you have any questions on that, put, put in the comments below and I'll try to try to explain that further. Uh, so then the smallest one is the CM or the commercial back bore. Um, I almost always have a 27 drill in the back right here and I do recommend that you use this as a two-piece setup so the back bore would come separate from the top of a commercial top. This is the, the same shape as the Z which is slightly bigger and it's the same shape as the CL, the classical, which is the biggest but the CM is the tightest and um, same shape again it's it's like this and it seems to really spit out those highs it seems to really uh, project well this is a great back bore for using uh, in big band or playing lead or even second trumpet um, if you're recording something it really sticks to tape we don't use tape anymore but it, it, it really is a good format for getting those highs to track on a recording format. Um, if you're playing a rock job, a rock gig, with a loud band that has amps and you don't have a microphone, or if you, if you do have a microphone but you're still, it's really loud, this is probably the backboard that you want. This has the most resistance. A lot of people still think it's a fairly open backboard. I don't think it's tight by any means, but it is my tightest backboard. Um, that's what I use a lot of the time for most re commercial recording that I do, for most commercial playing. That seems to have enough resistance to lean up against so that I don't feel like I'm falling into the mouthpiece. And that's a big important thing because the shape of the mouthpiece that goes kind of straight down and then over that V cup shape that I use personally and, the, and my most, most of my commercial models are, um, you can you can get tired and what helps you keep from bottoming out is that back bore so if uh, if you've ever tried an old jet tone mouthpiece you might find that you played really well on it for a while and then you get tired and you fall in and you start struggling with the pitch rising high and it, it starts going sharp or you might find that you just get tired and you start bottoming out and you can't produce a sound sometimes that's because you don't have enough resistance in the back bore. So 
an awful lot of attention is given to rim and cup. Not a lot of attention is given to backbore, and I would say out of rim and cup, your backbore is one of the, it's probably the most important thing for resistance and also uh, for sound. Um, so give me your, your questions and comments below and I'll try to answer them. But that's the difference between the commercial backbore, the Z backbore that looks like this, and the classical backbore. Thanks so much. Hope you're having a great day.